Good morning. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Mark. This is MacGyver's Garage. And today what we're going to be doing is working on the Jeep. We're going to start off first by replacing the wiper motor. It went out on me a few days ago. It had been failing kind of since I bought the Jeep. Um, and so now that it's completely failed, it is definitely time to replace it. Uh, you know, you don't want to be without wipers. So we're going to get into this today. Uh, you can see it's kind of cold. There's still some frost up on the Jeep. So definitely a chilly morning. Uh, we're going to start by getting the wipers off and then taking off the panel to expose where the wiper motor is. And then we'll uh, pull the entire assembly out, replace everything, and put it back in. So come along with me. Let's go. All right, so first thing we've got to do is get the wiper blade off. So it's got a little tab down here. Just take your flathead screwdriver, pry that tab open, and it'll come right off. Same thing on the second one, and it's off. Now I have to pull off this panel, and it's got five screws, all Phillips head, one, two, three, and two on the other side. So I'll just start over here. Additionally, there are two screws that you have to pull the weather stripping and find them on the front side so you lift the hood and you can get in there to get these. All right, now that we've got those screws out, we can pull this off. Okay, by taking that off, we now have access to the entire linkage system and the motor. So uh, we've got three bolts that hold us in, one there, one there, one on the other side, and then one connector. So we'll disconnect those, pull this entire assembly out. We'll start with disconnecting this. And so it's got this red clip. Kind of cut your flathead in there, twist to get that to unlock. All right, there you heard that click. And now you can squeeze it and pull it apart. And that's that. Get that out of the way. And now it's just these three bolts. And they're 10 millimeter. So I've got my socket here. All right, now you can take this entire unit and pull it out. Now, there are pivot bolt or pivot joints that kind of go in right here. So you've got to make sure that you get those out. And there you go. Entire assembly comes out like that. And now we can disconnect everything and replace the motor. All right, so we just pulled this out. On the back side, there are three bolts that hold this motor on. Uh, and then this motor has this rubber boot that if we can save, we'll go ahead and pull off. As long as it's not too brittle and doesn't crack, um, should be able to get it off and we can throw it on the new motor. These bolts are also 10 millimeter. The new motor did not come with replacement bolts, so I'm gonna make sure that I keep these. So we've actually gotta pull the linkage off of the motor anyway, so I'm just gonna disconnect this bolt and just move it out of the way. Say 13 millimeter. All right, so that nut is off. Now I should be able to pull the linkage off. There we go. Now. Complete access to it. All right, now the motor is off. And you can see this boot is on here. And this boot should be to help keep this from rusting. Um, there's a lot of junk in here. There's a whole lot of junk in here. That's interesting. So the boot was actually supple enough that I was able to get it off of here. Look at all the corrosion on this motor. That is crazy. Uh, but when I got to the, the actual connector, uh, I couldn't get it over there because this little piece, the little tabs that go into the assembly uh, to hold the, the connector in place was still in there. So it slides into this little groove right here like that just pry down the little lock pin on the end, pull it out, and now we can reuse this. And we can now run this through here. Put that in there. And 
maneuver this down through. It's tight, but we'll get it. Okay, so here is the nice new motor. You can see the old motor. I mean, really, look at the corrosion all the way around this thing. I mean, it is pretty bad. It's pretty nasty, flaking off. It's all bulged right there. So, nice new one. Should be an improvement. We should be back to having working wipers once we get this thing installed. So we're just gonna do everything in reverse. I'm gonna put the boot on to start, and then we're gonna get this thing installed. So let's do it. So we have that. Now we can take this connector and it plugs right into these two holes, but I'm gonna wait until it's connected and then stick it back on there so that I make sure that I've got enough room to get everything connected firmly. So let's get this installed back into the Jeep. So I tightened everything kind of loosely and now I'm just going back and snugging it up. Now we want to reconnect the connector here. So we'll put it together and then clip this down. Push this red piece down to lock it. There we go. Let's make sure we're there we go, now it's locked. And now we can take this entire piece, go back behind here, and snap it back in. There. So now everything's back in, tucked in, we can put the cover back on. Okay, we, before we actually reinstall the cover, what I would like to do, let's just test it. Make sure that it works before we close everything up. Otherwise, we may have to come back in here, get the multimeter out, and start checking whether or not there's actually power there. Well, that looks like it's working. That's good success. All right, so let's get everything closed back up, get the wipers back on, and uh, seal this thing up. All right, so now we just need to put the wiper blades back on. I wanna make sure that they're aligned where they need to be, and open them back up. Make sure this is open all the way. There we go. That needs to go down one or two clicks. That's perfect. Make sure it's on all the way and then close that. All right, there we go. Wipers are back installed, motor's working, everything's back to what it needs to be. Now, at some point in the future, once it warms up a little bit, I'm gonna be pulling this panel back off. I've got a little spot right here that has a little bit of corrosion, a little bit of surface rust. It's, it's very minimal. What I may do just for the meantime is when we get a day that's gonna be, I don't know, kind of over 50, maybe 60, I'm gonna go ahead and sand this down and just kind of hit it with some primer just to get it covered and get it protected. Uh, I do have I do have a little bit of protecting on there right now, but not enough to make me comfortable. And then, you know, come springtime when it's going to be warm for a few days, I'll pull this off, prep it, and just shoot the entire thing with a new, uh, a new coat. So we'll make this look good. Lots of little, lots of little pieces around that I need to do similar, similar work to. So there you go, guys. If you've got a Jeep TJ and you have a wiper motor that goes out. It's really easy to replace. Definitely a DIY project, not something you want to take it anywhere and pay anyone to do. Super easy, about a half hour, in, out, done, and it's working again. 
So appreciate you guys checking this out. If you have any questions, any comments, leave them down below. Got some more work we're going to be doing to the Jeep later today. I'm going to go in and get some lunch, warm up a little bit, and then we'll get back at it. So I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. That's not good. I had a feeling that might happen. I gotta widen this base a little.